three three and a quarter inches then they're, they're not very big at all but they're actually made out of one sheet of 12 by 12 paper you could use double-sided papers actually on reflection Jill if you wanted to just bear in mind that if it's directional they might not all end up in going the same way um now you can we can talk about this later but you can put these you can glue these bits together or put little tags in here or there's all sorts of ways of doing it but it's actually only made from one sheet of uh, 12 by 12 now I have actually got a written tutorial for this I found the other day but I just want to update a couple of things on it but as soon as I've done it I'll put it in the group uh, so it's literally one sheet of 12 by 12 and two covers it is really not difficult it's very quick and it's very easy and it's not going to take as long at all but i think these are really nice and the reason that i think that they're nice is because um i'm no card maker as people who know me will testify but if i wanted like a birthday card i could make one of these instead especially if it was like i don't know from a group of people from an office or a class or something like that so um i could uh i could make one of these and everybody could sign a bit it doesn't have to be just for a book i think they make really cute little little birthday cards or or special event cards as well also, you could make a little wedding book out of it i guess um but they are super easy this one um you know is really focused on a teacher um there's this one here for christmas i've got another one that i've just seen all the way up here Oh, well, everything's going to tumble down now that I made um, a while ago. Sort of a more vintagey one. So it's entirely up to you. Style just, you know, is very, very simple. You can you can make it into anything that you like. So, so but here's one I made earlier. So I'm going to put those to one side um, and uh, we are going to start to make them. It is not going to take long. It is not. A difficult book to make at all so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to cut our chipboard so i've grabbed a piece here a bit thicker than i anticipated but it will do and i am going to cut two squares of card at three and a quarter inches square so you don't need much at all and it doesn't have to be thick card it can be card that you found um cereal boxes they'll do doesn't really matter hold on let me just grab my knife luckily mark's downstairs so he can't see me doing this hi julie hi fiona you know last week i bruised my hand and i knew i knew how i'd done it well, it's loads better as you can see, but I want to know where this bruise has come from because I don't know. Anyway, another of life's little mysteries. So, three and a quarter inches square. I bet I'm doing this off camera, aren't I? Yeah. Three and a quarter inches square. You really don't need much chipboard at all, just a little off cut will do. Oh dear, I think I might have cut that a bit short. Oh well, not to worry. Those don't even look square to me. Oh no, they are. Same size. Right, so I've got those two square bits there. Now, um, I'm going to use up some scraps for this because it is the perfect um, way to use up um, some scraps. So I dug out this, which is Graphic 45 Imagine. And it's some bits I had left over from oh the retreat book two years ago. I've just realised I'm sat on Mark's chair. Hang on, we're going to have to have a change around. You can have that one. You trusting me with a drink? Yes. 
Thank you. That's very brave. Right, I'll just give Mark his chair back because I've been sat in it all day because it's more comfortable than mine. No, it wasn't my safety ruler, Maggie. I've lost it. I don't know where my safety ruler is. It's... Oh, it's here. I thought it left me in disgust, but it's here. Um, yeah, so I've got this um, Graphic 45 uh, Imagine paper, which I've had left over from a very big book we did a couple of years ago. So I'm going to use that. So what I need to do next is choose a couple of pieces that I want to use for my cover. Um... I haven't even looked yet. So let's see what we've got left. Oh, that's nice. The blue's nice. I think... I'm going to use this one because to be honest with you other than on the back of the book you're not going to see a great deal of this paper so I've got my piece that I've chosen to cover my book with and I'm going to cut this now at I can't remember what size I did it hold on I think I did it Say four and a half inches square just to give us some extra. It's probably too much. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've run out of blades for my normal um, trimmer. So I'm having to resort to the big one, which is brilliant for cutting. And it's a rotary cutter, so it doesn't need the blades replacing. But it is quite unwieldy to keep moving backwards and forwards all the time. Right, so I've cut two pieces of my pattern paper at four and a half inches. So I'm just going to check that that fits on there. Oh, yes, it does. Absolutely perfectly. Hi, Larissa. I'm always walking into stuff. I'm terrible. I think that's, yeah, that must have been what I did here, but I honestly, I genuinely don't remember. Now you've got a choice. You can either use wet glue here or you can use um, double-sided tape. I'm going to use double-sided tape just because I want it to dry quickly. So if I'd thought about this, I would have got all this stuff out before I started, but that's just too much like hard work. So what I'm going to do now, same as we do every book, is I'm just going to put some double-sided tape onto one side of my chipboard covers. And I'm going to just take the top of that double-sided tape off. Now, you may have noticed if you follow my workshop page that today, April 1st, I don't know why I thought this was funny at the time, but I did it play, play havoc with my tax year. But I thought it would be a really good idea to start my business on April Fool's Day because that appealed to me. And it's four years ago today. And uh, I have to say, it's been four years hard work, but I've absolutely loved pretty much every minute of it. So, when I've finished this book, it will go to one lucky recipient 
don't care where you are in the world I'll pop a photo of it onto the main group page and if you pop your name underneath there I'll do a draw I'll give you a number and we'll do one of those random um, number generators and you can have this book as my present to you unless I really 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 like it myself in which case I'm keeping it right so uh, what we want to do is I've got my sticky side and I'm just going to pop that into the middle of my paper and I'm going to do that on both pieces okay right now I've done that and that's stuck down I am just going to slightly mitre the corners Have you been washing your hands, dear? Is that why you're singing happy birthday? And I'm just going to mitre those. I've left a bit of a gap because I always do. Hi, Mel. Late, as usual. Uh, but not too much of a one. And I'm going to do that on both pieces. Okay. Right, now what we need to do is we need to fold these over to cover the book. So the way that I tend to do it is what we need to do is to get a really sharp, crisp sort of edge. Hi, Julia. I like to train my paper to go the way that I want it to go because what we need to do is we actually need to just break the fibres in, in, the, in, the, um, in the paper. So I tend to rock it backwards and forwards when I'm edging um, just to get... Just to break those, start to break those fibres up a bit and it'll give us a good sharp crease. Okay, so I'm going to do that on both of these to start with. I'm just wondering where I've put my bone folder. That could be anywhere. Here it is. I'm just going to get make sure that I've got a good sharp edge on those. Celia, I can wait. Do you want me to tell you what to do? Are you working along? All you need to do is you need to yeah, you need to cut two pieces of chipboard at three and a quarter inches square okay so once you've cut those I then cut a piece of pattern paper four inches by four inches that I'm going to use for my cover and I've just stuck it on with double-sided tape that's all I've done hi Louise newbie crafter newbie paper crafter or newbie crafter full stop Mel, how's he getting on? Our favourite radio presenter, da one, one of our favourite radio presenters, Dan, is doing um, a test from home um, show tonight. Mel says she's been annoying him. So if anybody wants to listen, listen to Canic Chase Radio. You can get it all over the world on the internet. And I think it's canicchaseradio.co.uk if you want to listen. Hi, Beth. Oops. Right. So I've put some double sided tape on here to to, um, to stick this down, but I don't think that's enough. Well, it probably is on this book, but I am still like to add a little bit of wet glue. So, oh, so I'm just going to add a little, not quite as much as I put on, a little bit of wet glue just to the edges of my paper. And I'm going to stick that down. I've got glue everywhere now. Oh, I'm going to have to get it on my fingers. Oh, oh God, I hate that. Ah. Right. Okay, and then the same on this side. My nails aren't long enough to do this. Oh. 
See, if you haven't started, it won't take you long to catch up because, quite frankly, I'm faffing. Oh, I used to do loads of cross stitch, Louise. Ah. You do, and it won't take you long to get into the swing of it at all, but make this book because it's like dead easy. Really, really easy, and you get something really, really pretty at the end of it. Did you see Elizabeth Burroughs said and miss the size of the chipboard? The chipboard, Elizabeth, the chipboard. Hi, Vicky, by the way. Um, the chipboard is three and a quarter inches squared, and you need two of them. So you thought the list said two by three and a half? No, you need two by was it three and a quarter squared. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I'll have to go and have a look at it. Yeah, I think Anna replied to them. Oh, good. Right, okay. Oh. hate that right oh Sarah Mel Mel look Sarah says she can't stand glitter <laughs> oh don't say that in front of Mel right now I'm just going to train over those other corners there those are the bits of paper so what I've done is because I've obviously got that little lip there, I've just used my bone folder just to squidge it into the corners. So that when I fold it over, I can make sure I've got a really, really, really sharp crease. And if it's not quite in line, I just use my fingernail, my thumbnail just to put it together. OK. Right. Yeah, you've started a war now, Sarah. Mel won't speak to you anymore now. She knows you don't like glitter. Or, as I like to call it, I'm probably going to get into trouble for saying this, the herpes of the crafting world. How often do I do the videos? Well, Beth, actually, at the moment, I'm doing them every Wednesday. Um, every Wednesday night at 7.30 UK time. Um, normally, I don't do them that often, but I think this might become a thing now. Um, I was only doing them um, every week just to keep people um, busy. Although I think we've all got plenty to do. I've rediscovered cleaning and cooking, which is... Um, well, I was going to say it's nice. The cooking's nice. I'm not sure about the cleaning. Uh, I mean, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm happy, very happy to do these once a week. It's dependent whether or not you guys want them. Next week, I thought what we'd do is um, I put on my main page the this, uh, what do you call it, an envelope flip book that I did as a class boy years ago, probably about four years ago, actually. Um, and I thought we could do that next, next week, if you like, because that's nice and quick and simple and... Everybody can have a go. And then after that, I thought we could do another scrapbook page. But if you guys are around at the weekend, um, normally on the first Saturday of the month, I hold a crop um, in one of our local villages. Um, but obviously we can't meet together um, at the moment. So uh, what I'm doing is an online cyber crop. Um, so I thought as well as doing it for my crop, it would be nice if I did it, maybe, so everybody in this group um, could take part as well. So if you're around on Saturday, I'm going to be putting up a series of challenges in the group um, for a, a cyber crop. Um, I haven't done one before, so we'll have to see how it goes. Um, but we can we can give it a go. There's lots of prompts that I've done. Um, our theme is ordinary every day so we're looking at things like where we live who we live with um just how our lives are normally um so stuff that we all know about and what i will do over the next day or so is put up a list of photographs that you might need um so that you can all be all be ready to go and then i'll put uh challenges up every two hours in the group on Saturday and yes Hannah is going to be putting some quiz questions up as well so that should be uh, that should be fun um, 
it'll go up on Saturday, but it will be around. Um, and uh, you don't have to do it there and then. We've got some time to do it. Hi, Sue. Um, so, you, you know, you, don't, you can take your time. Right, so there are my covers. Okay, simple, just two squares, just covered in paper. So what we need to do now is the inside of the book. Now, the reason that this is called a one page wonder, and it's not my design, by the way. Hello, Maker. Do I pronounce that right? Hello, Reka. Um, it's because you're just using one sheet of 12 by 12. So here's my card. One sheet of 12 by 12. I'm just going to chop this bit off at the bottom before I start. And just make sure that my paper is square. Because I have noticed making these, that 12 by 12 card isn't always 12 by 12 for some bizarre reason. Uh, let's just check. Yep, yeah, that one is good old Tim Holtz. Right. Okay, so I've got my sheet of 12 by 12 paper. Reka, don't worry, you can watch it back. Unless, are you working along? Because all I've done, if you want to join in really quickly, is I've cut two pieces of chipboard at three and a quarter inches square. Hello, Jan. North Carolina. I know where that is. My geography is appalling, but I know where North Carolina is. It's in America. No, I knew that. I just know whereabouts in America it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, Reka. Um, two pieces of chipboard, three and a quarter inches square, and I'll, I've covered them with patterned paper at four inches square. That's all I've done. Okay. So I've got my piece of um, pa of plain card. Probably should take that off the back. It's not going to help my book any. Oh, bother. And I'm going to score it. Right. I'm going to score it at three inches at six inches and at nine inches. Okay. I'm then going to twist it around 90 degrees and I'm going to score it again at three inches at six inches and at nine inches. So what I've got is a grid of 16 squares on my 12 by 12 paper. You can put your scoreboard away because that's all we need it for. So as you can see here, I hope I've got all of these three inch square squares, 16 of them on my paper, okay? Now what I need to do next is I need to get, I you can either use scissors or a knife. I'm going to use a knife because I like to scare people. Uh, yeah, yeah, sharp and take a breath there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. Now the easiest way for me to describe how to cut it is I'm going to cut it into an M shape. So I'm going to cut from there up to there. So that's taking in three squares on that edge and I'm going to cut three squares on that edge okay so shall I do it first and then you follow me because it's easy to get this wrong trust me so I've got my first line of squares hang on I need to take my glasses off for this I'm just going to line up my ruler and I'm going to cut down that first line there So what I've got along my first my first line of squares, I have cut up three. Okay. 
we're going to do exactly the same cut on this side. So I'm just going to move along to that last set of squares and I am going to cut there. So here's what I've got. Okay, I've got three squares cut there and I've got three squares cut there. Okay, is this all alright so far? Not difficult. Okay, hi Sue. I am going to turn this all the way round so that I've got my two flaps here and there's no cut between these middle two lots of squares here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from this edge which is opposite the edge that we've already cut from, I'm going to cut up three. So it looks like, to me, I always think it looks like an M shape, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to cut down there. So I've now cut this into an M shape. Okay, let me turn that around a little shape. So I've got my M shape. Okay. Right. That's an M. You're all very quiet. My knife is a Fiskars knife. Uh, yes, I can change the blade. I've got several, but this is the one that I like the best. Um, I like X cut blades usually, but I have to say the ones that come with the Fiskars knife are absolutely brilliant. Um, I do like this one very much. Uh, disclaimer, I was on the Fiskars design team, um, but I've always been a big lover of Fiskars and anybody who knows me will tell you that that came way before being on the design team. Um, but yes, the, the, the blades are totally interchangeable. Um, I have another knife that I absolutely love, which I have absolutely no idea what the brand is, but I think I've had it for like 20 years. I mean, look at the state of that. But I use the X cut blades in that and I really, really, really like them. So um, there you go. This is sharp, mind, because I managed to cut my leg carrying this in a Tim Holtz bag and cut through my trousers. Mind you, that was my own fault for leaving the lid off it. But it's sharp and it comes, it comes with a dinky little lid that you're meant to use, but you know live dangerously right so what we've got here i've put it down now we've got this m right those of you who are working with me are we all right have we managed to get this far without chopping bits of ourselves off i've put the knife down you're waving it about okay So we're we done. Right, this is the best bit. Now we're going to fold our book. So we've already got our score lines. I'm going to fold that like that up to the score line. And then all we are going to do is, hi Kelly, we are going to fold like a concertina. So I'm folding that back and I'm folding that up. So I've got got a little concertina book yep then I'm going to fold that underneath and I'm going to concertina fold all the way down to the bottom again okay and I'm going to fold it round this will make sense when you're folding it I think rather than me just keeping explaining it you've got your score lines you're folding to the score lines and then where you've got your edge you'll know which way you'll know which way to fold it because there is really I can't fold it that way I'm gonna to have to fold it that way okay so I'm gonna fold that there and I've got my book it's not perfect but I don't really care about that because this particular paper is really great for distressing which is what I'm gonna do in a minute Is it best is it to use paper with the same colour? Uh, that is a perfectly reasonable question, Louise. And the answer is it's entirely up to you. Because what we've got now is we've got this book that opens like a book to a point. 
but where we've got like the folds where at the end at the edges where we where we're turning a corner they don't fold in the same way so it's entirely up to you which way you do it. it it doesn't you can use pattern paper no problem at all but just bear in mind that you might not have the directional look on it because we're obviously folding backwards and forwards all the time so there we go so we've got the book now what you do next to this paper is up to you if you're using like the distress card like i am if you're going to distress the edges now is a good time to do it so i use nail files as you can see i don't use them on my nails my nails are rubbish but i do use a nail file say on the edge of my papers just to distress it up a bit um make it look old what have you done with your nails i'm gonna paint yours one day and you can you can be my my hand double and I've just realised that actually I'm just doing it. I'm going to stick this to my book, so that was completely pointless. Anyway. But you can. If you're going to distress it or if you're going to ink the edges, do it now. Okay. So, I've got my book I've got, and I've got my front and my back. Now, this will just fit in, I hope, perfectly. Just think about which way up it is. That is going to fit perfectly in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some wet glue on there just think about which way it's opening you want these pages to open like a book diane neither of us are biased when it comes to fiskies are we but like i said i was biased way before oh dear way before i was ever on the design team so i feel perfectly justified in saying what i like okay you don't need too much glue I've got a bit happy with it and what I'm going to do with that page net uh, is I'm going to put it right in the middle of that back the back of my book oh glue and I'm going to stick it down okay so that's the back of my book oh stuck down <laughs> Sarah, many, many, many people have wanted to pause me and not been able to. <laughs> right, OK, so that's the back of my book. The front of my book with this beautifully distressed page, which I now don't need. I'm going to just stick some glue onto the front of that there, onto that page. I'm going to get the front of my cover and I'm going to pop that on top. And I'm going to make sure that that is square okay and i'm just going to glue that down oh. okay and that is actually the book put together i know cindy it's because i, I chopped too much off the top of my um the, the top of my bottle i'm just reading the reason i'm pausing is because i've just read what you've written to sarah about shutting me up um, carry on. Yeah. Um, it's, so the, the glue's getting everywhere, but I have used nearly a whole bottle of this on my 12 by 12 book. Right, I'm not going to show you the book. I'm not going to show it to you, but you can have a sneak peek. I'm just going to stick it under the camera it, and then I'm going to take it away. All right. So, right, are you ready? Here it is. This is the 12 by 12 book. It's not finished, but that's a 12 by 12 book, and that's all you're getting. There you go. Right, so there we go. That's the book. So what we need to do now is have a look inside. Do we want our pages to be like proper pages in a book so that every page opens up like this? Well, we've got a choice. We can either leave it as it is, which is what I tend to do, um, or you can glue bits together. So maybe I want to put tags in here. In fact, actually, I am going to put tags in there when I come round to it. So what I'm going to do so that I have got, I can put tags in the top of this book is I'm just going to put, I wish I knew where I put my little tiny glue bottles because I'm going to need them. Um, I'm going to just put a little bit of glue just down that edge there. Everyone's calling you a teaser. Are they? That's not nice. And I'm just going to glue that down 
so that when I open that up now, that page that was two pages is now one page with a hole in the top where I can put a tag. So that makes sense. I am teasing. I really, really, really want to show it to you. I am desperate to show it to you, but it's not finished. And I want to show you them both together. And it's killing me. It's, it's, it's a lot harder for me than it is for you, I can assure you, because I really, really, really want to show it. But I will give you another bit of information. And that is, there is room in this book for, if you count the front, I've put pockets on the front of that one. But if you count the front, there is room for three full 12 by 12 layouts. If you want to. You can put pockets in or you can put layouts but I'm I'm really I'm really pleased with it right so that's that first page this one I'm gonna have to put a little bit of glue down that side oh god what a mess I might have to redo this for the for the prize uh. So now I've got two ordinary pages, but they've both got room for tags in the top. This next one. Let's glue that down. Mm, that one isn't going to have a tag at all. I'm just going to stick those pages together because it doesn't open up at the top that one does though oh it's because it doesn't stick right and so on and so forth you get the idea right don't you right so now best bit decorating the book you can ink the edges of it if you want to you can see on this one i've inked the edges i think i've only got black ink on these which is going to be a bit dark maybe let's have a look well maybe if i'm gentle oh, i don't know hang on uh, need something to rub this off with oh no that's my plan for the International Scrapbook Day cyber thingy. Let anyway, question. Uh, three full layouts. Yes, this in in the bookmaker there are there is room for three full twelve by twelve layouts. Um, I've put pockets. I can't show you yet because I'm only going to hate myself if I do. But what I will do is I'm hoping to finish them by the weekend. And I will do a proper video of both books, one with pockets and one with layouts. And I will put them in the group so that you see them. And it will be absolutely clear about how the book works. But as it stands, yeah, there's room for proper 12 by 12 layouts because it's a huge book. Right. So closure. Now, I've used a ribbon closure on each of these books, but you will notice that I've actually only attached the ribbon at the front of the book and the reason for that is if you attach the ribbon all the way round it becomes quite difficult to actually open the book up it just kind of all it doesn't it doesn't kind of sit right so a little tip from me there I did have some ribbon that I was going to use I brought it through with me don't know But now all we've got to do is decorate up the front of the book. So that's not long enough. I definitely brought some through with me. I want to use one of these. Is 
it's going to be too wide now, I reckon. Hmm, bits of it. Uh, right. So you, you've got the book now. It's just a case of decorating up however you want to. You can sit and watch me decorate up for a bit if you like, but I warn you, I'm indecisive and um, it takes me a while. Shouldn't you wear my ribbon at God? What's that ribbon right in front of you? Where? It's on a, oh, it's on no, the book. it's on the book. It's it's on a roll. Okay, let me see. If I ask, oh, where's my glasses gone? If I ask you to go and get me some cream ribbon out of the storeroom, do you do you know what I mean? Mm. Let's see what he comes back with. Plain cream ribbon. Pedrita. Oh, yeah, that one. Thank you. Where was it? In the storage room. Oh. Yeah. So, um, I always take much more than I need to start with. And what I'm going to do first is I am going to pop a little bit of double-sided tape onto the front of my book. so that I can just attach where I want it to go. So I know that that's half of my ribbon there. I'm just going to attach that across there. Okay. Now you can use anything to uh, decorate the front of your book. You can use wooden bits, you can use stickers, you can use bits of uh, paper. I'm just wondering if I've got a wooden frame here or whether I need to go and find one. Should have thought of that a bit sooner, really. Got some chipboard, all sorts of bits here. Right, two seconds, I will be back. I'm just going to go and see if I can find a wooden frame. You know it's bizarre but since I tidied out my craft room, my storeroom, um, over Christmas I can actually find stuff again. Aha! That is perfect. So what can I put with it? I think some butterflies. Mark's helpful. Well, yes, I guess on the whole. Yes, sorry. There you go, is that a bit better? I'm just going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. Yeah, you need to move. I've just moved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to cut out this butterfly because everybody likes butterflies please notice that although I'm left-handed I cut out right-handed because I'm just weird like that yep. I've actually I've only just noticed that but I do okay so I've got a little butterfly I can pop on there somewhere I like that imagination word but it's too big to fit on so I'm just going to cut round it Oh yeah, you were telling me what um, 
what papers you were using. So what's everybody else using? I know Steph said some Jen Hadfield. By the way, if you've got any friends who you want to invite to the group, please feel free because we're on 980 people. Uh, and it would be, it would make me really happy if we could make the thousand today. That would be ace. So if you've got some friends who haven't joined, invite them, will you? I just need 20 more and I'll be happy. Because that's what kind of things you put in it. Um, well, you can put little tiny photos in, for sure. Um, I've used it for cards and had people sign it. You can put quotes in it. Um, you could put ooh, all sorts of things. Maybe if you're doing a birthday book for somebody, you put little verses or something in. I'm trying to think if I've actually ever put photos in it myself. I don't think I have. But you absolutely could fit them in. Right, flower. Tracy, love your design. Well, this book isn't one of mine. It's as old as the hills. I think it was probably the first book I ever made. In fact, actually, I did find one when I was tidying up, which was taught to me by a wonderful lady who is absolutely still about crafting. She's not scrapping so much anymore in the paper sense, but she does loads and loads and loads of um, sewing and makes memory books from fabric photos. I don't know how she does it, but it's amazing. Anyway, her name's Donna Dowd, and you can find her on... Um, I'm just trying to think what... The, the, I'll, I'll put a link in the group to her page. Um, but her, her work is just beautiful, and she did... She she ran the first crop that I ever went to. And I'm sure she taught me how to make these. I'll tell you what, there is no pressure like trying to design live on one of these. One of these lives. Because normally I, I faff around and take ages and I'm feeling the pressure now. greenery what else can we put on there oh you haven't got any of your 3d printed little um clocks have you uh no oh. that would have been good to put on there i've got a string thing Oh, that might do. Oh, it might be too big. Oh, I don't know. Well, possibly. Yeah, it's a bit too white. I haven't got time to paint it. talking to you and you're probably answering me and I'm, I'm not even looking to see what you're saying oh no I don't know that one I 
Wow. Susan, that's going back a bit. I thought next week we could do that envelope flip book that we did. Do you remember that one? You seen a Melanie Buker, Melanie Buker's question to you? No. Hi, Kimberly. Whose question have I missed? Oh, Melanie Buker. Sorry, let me go back a bit. Absolutely you are Melanie. I, this isn't anyway, just remember that this one, this is not my design. I have no rights to it. It's just as old as the hills and everybody knows how to make it. It's you know, it's it's I'm I'm can't take any credit for it at all. I don't know who the original designer was because you know, like I said, it must have been going a good twenty odd years this design. On the whole, with my other books, if you're making them um, for personal use, you can show them wherever you like. I don't, you know, I'm glad you're making them. Um, you know, put them on your page, put them on groups. Um, if you're going to put them in, in other groups, feel free. If you are allowed, because not every group allows it, but if you're allowed to credit me, then that's absolutely ace. Um, the only thing that I say or, or that I ask is that if you're going to teach this and make money out of it um i'd kind of like to know uh i do have or i am working on a teaching license which costs next to nothing but will be really great for the teacher because i put some um sort of like extra teaching aids together that i think would be a value because i i teach well obviously i teach books um and I know what joy they bring to people. So I would just be, if you're going to teach them, um, I'd just be looking for a nominal fee just to cover these extra sort of um, resources that I've put together for you. Uh, but I'm, I am quite happy for you to show your book wherever you like. That's entirely up to you. I'm just grateful that you're making them and that you like them. Although I'm, I've nearly run out of ideas now. So, you know, this probably won't last much longer. No, I'm joking. I've got once the 12 by 12 books done. Um, I've got uh, an, another book in my head, which I haven't made yet. But for those of you Stamperia fans who asked me to do House of Roses, you will be delighted to hear that that is what we'll be using for that book. It's going to be pink, which is not my favourite colour at all. But it's a pink book with pink House of Roses paper. So I'm sure you'll like that. So I'll get working on that um, when I've finished uh, the 12 by 12s. Um, and then after that, we're going to be doing a Wizard of Oz book. So we'll see. Got a few planned out. Right, let's have a look at this. I want some more roses I think this is the only trouble with using dribs and drabs of paper so you haven't got loads left Nearly there. So he's going to join me on Saturday then for the cyber crop. So you don't have to do it at that moment. You can come back and do it later. But there are, I think, hang on. 
five challenges there might be six I can't remember but they'll be around scrapbooking as opposed to mini books. It's 10 o'clock UK time we're starting but the challenges will be in the group and you can always come back to them later right okay now I'm going to start gluing these on it'll be on this channel it'll be in paper scissors story so yeah absolutely I'm not planning on doing any lives but I will be linking into somebody else's YouTube video who's going to teach you, I'm telling you far too much, who's going to teach you a little bit of origami. That's all I'm saying. Right, I think I need some more greenery over there, so let me find some. Ooh, a tag, just what I need. You know I love um, graphic 45 paper because I think it doesn't matter what you make it always looks incredible even if you think you are the world's worst crafter if you use graphic 45 paper everything is a masterpiece right okay so now I'm going to stick my little uh, frame on which I can't remember what this was who does bare basics is it paper mania i think this was a bare basics frame all right let's just make sure that's yep and i'm gonna stick that on And a few butterflies, because you've got to have butterflies. Oh, far too much glue. Hang on. Butterfly, if I can find one somewhere. Oh, found a real leaf. Hmm. I've forgotten how much I like this paper. Ah, oh, there's one. Oh, far too much glue again. That will teach me. I'm going to put that one down there. Okay, 
So there's my little book. Now I can test how long this ribbon should be by tying it. Right, that's too long at the moment. Okay. Right. So that's the book. If you can see it there. And I've used my ribbon to tie it. It's just plain on the back. But I need to leave that to dry for a bit inside as you remember I was gluing my pages together so that I could put little tags in here so for example I've just found a tag that goes with the paper line I'm going to pop that in there um, and I'm going to pop some um, other tags as well that I've got just some plain um, some plain tags but here on the pages I could maybe add um, some more cutouts. I could cut out some flowers and add those to the pages. Um, I've got things like this little, that fits really nice there. I'm going to put that there. I can put bits of the papers. Watch me not put that in straight. I'm going to finish that off anyway and I will take some photos for you um, offline so that you can see that all finished. But you get the idea. It is really the easiest book you have ever made in your life and that is all there is to it. So did you manage to keep up? Oh. Right, I'm just going back through through the messages. Melanie saying about not out to profit. Trust me, teaching is one of the best things you could ever hope to do. I love it. I love it because my my idea about teaching is that I honestly believe that books are not complicated at all. I believe even people who have never made a book before can make them. And I think I've proved that several times, actually, at retreats and things. Um, so uh, I, I just I just love to see what people do with the books and and how they, you know, how the, how they come up with them and, you know, their their own takes on them. Um, I don't think I don't think there's 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 anything nicer, really. So where are we? Right, gosh, you've been busy chatting while I've been cutting up. I'm just trying to catch up now. If I've missed any questions, I am so sorry. How I do the V in the ribbon? Well, all I do, <laughs> I just guess. I just cut up. This stops it fraying. You can either cut it straight across like that. That will stop your ribbon fraying. You can also very, very carefully put it up to a flame, but be careful because it'll just melt the edges as well, which will keep it, which will keep it together. But the the little um, banner shape that I've done, I literally I didn't even measure it. You know what I'm like. I just literally just cut that in the bottom of my ribbon. Dead easy. Okay. So, any questions before we go any further? Anything anybody wants to know? I will take some... Oh, Sue, that's lovely. It's great, though, teaching, isn't it? It is great just to see how people... The smile on somebody's face when they've made something that they're proud of or made something that they didn't think they could do. I don't think... I don't think there's anything better, apart from chocolate. But other than that... I don't think there's anything better, really. Um, so, are we all all right? Are we all... Hi, Julie. I'm just finishing. Sorry, darling. Um, how, uh, how, how are we getting on? Any questions? Anything else you want to know? We will get together again next 
Wednesday evening at 7.30 and we will be doing the envelope flip book and I will put up the information for that in the group hopefully this evening now we've finished here. I will finish off my book, I will take some photographs um, um, the lady with the lovely long name is Darlene your first name or Crowder your first name I don't want to get it wrong anyway I'm really glad you found this group too I love it as well so I'm glad you're here um, so yes yeah, 7.30 we'll do the envelope flip book Saturday at 10am UK time we'll start the cyber crop um, but you can do that at any time. I'm not going to be doing any lives as far as I'm aware at this point. It'll just be a series of challenges and I'll show you what I've done with them. So thank you very much for joining me this evening, guys. I'm sorry that was short and sweet, um, but uh, it was fun. I'm actually really pleased with mine because I was, <laughs> I was getting a bit stressed. I wasn't going to be able to do it in front of you then. Um, but anyway, I will see you guys really, really soon in the group and thank you very, very, very much. And thank you to Mark and to Wendy and to Hannah for, um, putting everybody straight with their questions and helping out with things like the OneDrive link, which I am dating. I'm just editing some films at the moment because I've got two books to edit, uh, but we'll be there soon. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. I will see you all soon and, uh, take care of yourselves. Bye.